I've said this a billion times before, and I'll say it a billion times over. War Thunder is a grind with some bits of game sprinkled within it. You're either grinding RP for a vehicle and its modifications, grinding for Silver Lions to buy and crew the vehicle, grinding mission score for some event vehicle, or just grinding out crew levels, expert crew, and ace crew. Or even if you're personally not grinding, someone else will always be grinding something out. And of course, when you're grinding, you'll have to maximize each action to get the most RP out of it. Sometimes you take out a tech tree vehicle that's very meta to get you more kills, more bombs, more caps in the, in the game. And... But most of the time, it's really just a premium vehicle that gives you a lot of SL and a lot of RP for doing the same exact actions as a tech tree vehicle. This is why there are black hole battle ratings like 10-3 to 11-3, 11-0 to 12-0, and 12-0 to 13-0 in Air RB, 9.3 to 10-3, 10-3 to 11-3 in Ground RB. These are where the high tier premiums in good event vehicles go. People will always go for the high tier premiums because it allows them to grind all the tiers lower than it. So if they want to fill out a tree or start out a tree that they haven't touched yet, a high tier premium is a fast way to go about it. War Thunder is some sort of unstable Jenga that collapses every time something happens. For example, War Thunder tank players want decent close air support. Gaijin offers close air support vehicles that are wholly unfit for air RB meta, but work good as close air support. So they put them at ridiculously low battle ratings and make them competitive in air RB. So you can have teams of A-10s, SU-25s, Tornadoes, AMXs and so on because they need to grind their modules in Air RB. Or, in case of the premium counterparts of these aircraft, they're being used in Air RB to grind up the entire tech tree because they're at very low BRs, where their under tiered weapons make up for their abject lack of air performance, and they're at a high enough tier to grind a majority of their tech tree below it. This happens because it's just far less work for the devs to stick them in low battle ratings than overall overall fix air rb the air rb gameplay cycle is boring and repetitive as a whole you spawn do team deathmatch or bomb basis and repeat the only thing that changes over time is the vehicle you play i know people are going to say well that's because the fastest way to get RP and SL is to bomb or kill other aircraft. That's the point. Air RB will remain this way because this game setup works for grinding and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Even if it's boring. Gaijin can indefinitely keep Air RB this way and it'll work because it's the only solution that meets all the criteria. The criteria that 1. Attackers need to do something in your rb so they can keep adding attacker premiums and people will buy it because they're viable for both ground and air rb two the learning curve is kept as smooth as possible basically flat for all sorts of players and three it requires the least amount of work from the developers in short for the sake of grinding War Thunder is sacrificing Air RB at the altar of grinding. But the thing is, there is one easy solution to the grinding versus gameplay issue. Air RB Enduring Confrontation. Air RB Enduring Confrontation accomplishes so much because it allows people to tailor their grind. If they feel like a full hour is enough for the day, they can accomplish it with one game of Air RB Enduring Conflict. If they feel they need more, they can play as long as they want to get as much RP as they need. Air RB Enduring Conflict also allows players to grind different aircraft in one match so they can get modifications for as much aircraft as possible because Air RB Enduring Conflict allows you to take your lineups and play them in that game. 
making spading aircraft grossly easier and done in batches. The large map sizes can justify the 16v16 by spreading out airfields and objectives throughout the entire map. Attackers that only want to do ground targets or bases can do only that. Sim is good, but there are people who are not good enough to play Sim, and those who want to learn Sim are pretty much handicapped with mouse aim mode unless they purchase um, flight sticks, track IRs, and all that. I'm not saying that you need to. You need to do flight sticks, track IR, and whatnot, but it does give you an advantage. I've played Sim last year, and I only have a Logitech 3D Extreme Pro, and all I could really do in Sim EC is bomb stuff. Not, I don't have the I don't have the advantage to be able to dogfight most of my enemies, and I don't know. There's still a barrier of entry to sim. If you take away the barrier of entry to sim and make air RB EC, I think a lot of players will actually appreciate that. When air RB EC absorbs all the energy or the necessary grinds to be done for air RB, when air RB EC absorbs all the necessary grinds to be done for air RB, this opens up an opportunity for the developers to rework the regular air rb mode into a far more fun game mode if you'll allow me to say fun in the context of war thunder 4v4 or 5v5 air superiority matches escorting ai bombers air cover for ai ground forces and objectives that are intentionally placed in the context of the map instead of procedurally generated such as airfields helipads depots bridges radar facilities in places that matter. They can be defended by ground vehicles instead of just convoys moving everywhere, and you can also destroy actual convoys that make sense. You can also destroy surface-to-air batteries or ballistic missile batteries like the MG M52 Lance or the S-75 batteries, which were recently added in the files and also implemented on maps as static ground targets for attackers. So instead of actually just making them static targets, they could do actual stuff that they need to do. Shoot um, ballistic missiles, you have to prevent them from shooting ballistic missiles. And the S-75 batteries would shoot at AI aircraft and you need to destroy them in order for your team to win. I hate to compare this game with DCS because DCS is fundamentally a different game from War Thunder. DCS focuses on the combat portion of the digital combat simulator name. This in War Thunder is just take out your plane, kill another player. There's no combat to it. There's I mean there's no nuance in the combat. It's just whoever which one of you kills each other, that's it. Um, you're just spawned in a sandbox and you're there to kill each other. Meanwhile, DCS adds context to the combat sometimes. Um, you have missions where you can do um, suppression of enemy air defense missions, destroying ground targets missions, and there are aircraft, other aircraft like opposing aircraft are sent to. Um, intercept you and you're allowed to defend yourself that's putting context to combat you're not there to find another plane and shoot you down instead you're there for a mission and sometimes that mission requires the opposing enemy to intercept you that's context to the combat that's not what you find in war thunder war thunder is pvp find each other kill each other that's how you win I'm not saying DCS is better for it, I'm not saying War Thunder is worse off, but there is a reason why a small amount of vehicles work for DCS compared to the 2,000 vehicles of War Thunder. Because at the end of the day, if you have 2,000 vehicles in one game, which is a 
fairly impressive, but all you do is the same thing in the game mode, it kind of defeats the purpose. Why would you take out something like an L16C if the F15 MSI B2 could accomplish eh, more or less the same thing? I mean, sure, it's maybe you prefer the F16 over the F15, but if you're grinding for something, you're obviously going to stack the deck in your favor. Why would you take 6 Amramps if you can take a plane that can have 8? Why take the... Worse off dogfighting F-16C to the air superiority fighter that's the F-15C. You know, it's... It's just... It's just forming metas in War Thunder. Because of course it's PvP. But if you take out the... If you take out the air combat aspect, just the air superiority aspect of War Thunder, and give you an air RB mode that rewards um, destroying objectives instead of just um, mindlessly killing each other, I think there's there's hope for a fun experience to be had in War Thunder. But then again, yeah, like I said, it's too much work, even just me writing this is too much work to think about and the idea that the devs um have no idea to how to pull that off in the context of war thunder is also a challenge but look they have the resources right they have the resources to do this stuff um they have the resources to ask players what they want to see from a more realistic game mode right because it's clear that everybody wants Air RB Enduring Conflict. They want that as a separate game mode. It's just a safer bet for grinding. But they don't realize what they can do with um, Air RB. The potential of Air RB is great compared to um, just leaving it as is. As this dead, boring grinding mode. I honestly believe that War Thunder can be better, but right now it's not it's not probably happening because yeah, grinding the game is the paramount objective. There's always the shiny new vehicle to play, right? There's always this notion that uh you play War Thunder to get RP to get to the next vehicle. That's me, honestly. I am not. I'm not lying. I haven't had the drive to play War Thunder after my uh, one month absence because after I grinded out the J10, the F111F, the A10C, and the SU24. War Thunder stale for me. I wanted to grind out the Barak 2, the F-16 Charlie Barak 2 for Israel, but I don't know. I just don't have the I just don't have the enthusiasm to play a game mode over and over again just to get that V. I I'm, I'm sorry for going off script. This this entire past. Three, four minutes is just off script because I really just wanted to share my thoughts about Air RB. War Thunder drew me with aircraft and aviation when I started playing in 2014. That's the main point or main reason I played this game. And for the most part, it's still what drives me to play this game, even if I do have all the top tier tanks for every nation. I still lean towards the side of aviation because that's what I love doing. And to see this game mode remain the same for 10 years, I don't know. Like, think, think of Grand RB. Grand RB's problem 
is not being stale because there's so many things that can happen with capture the uh, capture the flag that um there's really no way of making it boring because you're still forced to play the objectives. Uh, you can't team deathmatch ground RB because someone will always have enough spawn points. Someone will always just sit their ass in a plane, land in the airbase, refuel, destroy another set of vehicles. Ground RB is too dynamic. Air RB isn't. It's... In Air RB, you have four ways of ending the game. Okay, you have four ways of ending the game. Either you kill everyone in the team, you bleed out the tickets, you're the last enemy lands in the airfield and drays out, or nothing happens. The server is screwed. Everyone gets booted. That's the four ways a game can end in ARRB. For Grand RB, there are many ways. You can bleed the tickets out by capturing all the points, capturing only two points, taking the entire enemy out after you've captured all the points, a nuke, which could save a losing team from the brink. So that's four. That's four ways. That's four ways. The ground RB match could end. They could. We could just run out the time, and both of uh, and someone with the most more tickets wins. That could happen in Air RB, but it almost never does because there's automatic ticket bleed. If AI destroy another AI vehicle, the other team. Has their tickets bleed out. That's why I have this match with the F5C that mm, mm, made me do ground pounding because we were about to lose because our the gap between our tickets was so different. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's another way attackers are being given an advantage. The A10 can basically drain your tickets half by the middle of the match just by ground pounding and and let the and let the AI ticket bleed do it you know I have been thinking of ways to um, deliver content like this this is off script you know half half of this entire video is now just off script uh, let me know if you like off-script videos, just me telling my, uh, pure thoughts, because I actually like this freeform talking, where I just, you know, speak. Like my other China video, the China will grow larger, that's largely unscripted. I just decided to wake up one day and slag off, uh, in a weird British accent as well. I don't know why I decided to do a British accent. Maybe it's because I l watch a lot of rocket-powered Mohawk recently and felt like I could only slag off the uh, developers with that um, kind of accent, the Sheffield accent. But, you know, if you want me to deliver that kind of energy again, compared to this more subdued, calm, rational discussion that is... Um, that I'm doing right now you know just tell me do you want the energetic doc the one on Adderall or the one on depressants the one on downers this one doc downer don't downer doc I love air RB right I love air RB I have every vehicle researched except for the new ones this update and I I can't seem to want to research them because it's, I remember it's Air RB. But given that, I still love the new machines enough to still want to grind. But the question still stands what happens when you do run out of machines to add? Because that's the, sm that's the 
tiny slither of foundation that Warthunder is hinging on. It can't do these um, quality of life only updates because nobody would play it. Um, we ha we're having the October update also coming. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about as well. There's the uh, October update coming. And that's going to be a small update. And what happens is that people won't be that interested or invested in that update because there's not much content to be had there. Last time we had the uh, Fire and Ice update, uh, which was just copy pasted Finnish vehicles, and nobody was really interested in it. So. What we have for next update, don't expect much. I think there will be one or two big additions, but mostly you're not gonna get anything big, big, big like uh, seek and destroy big. That's for the December update, the holiday update. That's what you're gonna play. Yeah, so take that October update and make it worse. You see the you see the gap between the January and March update where nobody wants to play the game. That's what happens if War Thunder stops adding being. There's nothing left for you to do because they focused on a grind-centered economy. That when there's nothing left to grind, people aren't staying for the gameplay. People aren't drawn back by gameplay. In DCS, yeah, you pay what. 60 bucks, 70 bucks, 80 bucks for a module, a single vehicle module. But you keep going back because they let you do things that you want to play. For example, you want to do ground strike with the F4, the F16, the Mirage, you can do it. You want to do air interception, fine. You want to do PvP, fine. DCS allows you to do a whole plethora of things with one vehicle. War Thunder allows you to do one thing with a plethora of vehicles. It's impressive you have 2,000 vehicles in the game and only one way to play it. Anyways, thanks for listening to this long and winded speech that got way out of hand. Way tangent. Way... Way uncontrollable. I'm sorry I rambled, I just was really bored and I just wanted to talk about War Thunder. We'll do another War Thunder chats next week or the week after that, okay? That depends if I feel like slagging off the game again or I just want to read Brain Rot. You'll know it when I upload it. And of course, members get it early. I had to do a membership, um membership for my channel because if you wanted to do the uncensored versions of WT chats you can see it there and I'd also put my videos early in advance there and if you wanted to join my membership I think I could also allow um, you to join my squadron uh, I think we'll if you want to join cafe with me play it with me yeah I'll, I'll look into it, but if I can't let you join Cafe as is, we'll make a new squadron if you're a member. Um, you get access to the first squadron where I am the member, where I am a member, so if you want to play squadron with me, no problem. We'll see when we get there, because chances are I could still just give up on that and go back to... Uh, just ignoring my members or just uploading the uncensored versions of WT chats on it. I'm still thinking of um, th still thinking of enticing rewards to justify the three dollar entry fee. But yeah, if you really want to support me with uh, membership, yes, please join my channel. Um, I'd be happy to have you as my member. I'll give you special access to Discord channels that I frequent. And um, other than that, yeah, cheers. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for taking the time to sit here with me and uh, just listening to me ramble about the state of the game that I've been playing for 10 years um, and I've just recently gotten 
a whole vacation. I, actually, this is the longest time I've not played War Thunder since 2020. Because in 2020, when they uh, when they did the Starfighters update, I did not play War Thunder until Raining Fire. That's right, I didn't play until Raining Fire and New Power. So from uh, June to September, I didn't play War Thunder. But this one, this new one is just four weeks, so... This is the Dr. MD, and as always, if you have any questions, please join my Discord again. I'm happy to give you tips, I'm happy to give you advice on grinding, especially me, I grind a lot. Um, you can even send me clips if you want, you can send me clips of your gameplay. See how better you could have gone it, cause not only Air RB, I'm not good with tanks. In Air RB, I think I can say that I'm good enough to give advice on how to do better. I'm no defined, but I've had my fair share of uh, first places to third places. But yeah, uh, I don't actually know what stuff I'm gonna put in this video. Maybe it'll just be a. Uh, Simple talking video behind some gameplay. But anyways, uh, let's see how long this has become. It's become 20 minutes. It's a 20 minute talk on me just lamenting the state of your army. And if you sat through this, you know what? Thank you. Not a lot of people would sit through someone like something like this for someone like me. But if you did, I appreciate the time you took. And as always, Godspeed.